Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm glad that you stopped in. If you like, hit the like button and if you want you can subscribe. It does help my channel a whole lot and I appreciate it so much. And um, thank you again. Uh, Kaylee Mc McAnney served President Trump as his press secretary. Um, now McKinney is a prominent host on Fox News. And Kaylee McKinney, I say McKinney, it's McKinney, M-C, capital E-N-A-N-Y, McNanny, McNanny, took Donald Trump by surprise with his huge betrayal. It was not a good election night for former President Donald Trump as the U.S. Senate candidates as well as congregational and gubernatorial candidates. He endorsed underperformed expectations in key races nationwide. Trump endorsed Republican Senate nominees uh, Dr. Oz and Don Bold uh, Bolduk, Bolduk, lost uh, winnable races in Pennsylvania and New Hampshire, respectively. Uh, and with both candidates failing to secure at least 50% of the vote. Herschel Walker now finds himself in a runoff against the incumbent Senator uh, Raphael Warnock, Democrat of Georgia. That runoff is slated for the first week of December. <clears throat> but Trump had previously announced that he would make a major announcement about his future on November 15th, which many expect will be the kickoff of a 2024 presidential campaign. On Fox News, outnumbered the day after the election, former Trump press secretary turned Fox News host Kaylee Mc McAnney suggested that the former president should pump the brakes on announcing his candidacy before the uh, Georgia runoff. As far as McAnney, is concerned with control of the Senate still up in the air, Republicans should put every ounce of energy into winning the runoff and avoid anything that distracts from it. I know there's a, a temptation to talk about 2024, McKinney began. No, no, no. 2022 is not over. Every bit of Republican energy needs to go to the grinding, the binding agenda to a halt. I agree there. I bet a lot of us do. McKinney said she believes Trump should postpone his announcement until after December 6th runoff election, but that he will likely make his own decision, though. I think he needs to put it on pause, absolutely, McKinney stated. He will make his own decision, which he was hoping, but Republicans have bad memories from the 2020 uh, Georgia Senate runoff. Immediately following Election Day 2020, prevailing wisdom suggested that Republican uh, Kelly Loeffler would be able to defeat Warnock in the runoff, thus giving Republicans a Senate majority. But after all the chaos that ensued following Trump's loss, Senator Warnock, along with fellow Senator Jean Ossoff, O-S-S-O-F-F, -S -S -F, Democrat of Georgia, Jean Ozoff, won the January 2021 runoff, giving Democrats the majority. If Republicans can pull out a win in either the Nevada or Arizona Senate race, where votes are still being counted for some reason, then control of the United States Senate will absolutely come down to a Georgia runoff once again. Both Republican establishment and Donald Trump face planet on election day, making what should have been a red wave a mere red fizzle, and putting Republican Republicans chances at securing a Senate majority in serious jeopardy. And now that the GOP has been gifted a second chance to reclaim the Senate majority, conservatives want to ensure all Republicans Keep their eye on the prize. And stay tuned for no news and updates on this upcoming story. Now, um, I read just a few minutes ago 
uh, they're still counting votes in some of the states. Wow. That is a long time, isn't it? But, oh well. But I'm glad that Trump came out and we all suspected that he was going to run because we need him back. We do. We need him back. On um, Putin. Oh, Putin, Putin. Is getting secret shipments from North Korea. And their secret shipments. Russia is receiving secret shipments of artillery, shells, and ammunition from North Korea to aid in the Ukraine war. According to a report from the Defense and National Security website, 1945. Disclassified U.S. intelligence reportedly revealed that the transaction shows Russia continuing to struggle to replace an ammunition, including its artillery systems. Well, boy, we need to replenish ours. Biden sent all ours over to uh, Ukraine. And the machinery was left there. Don't make sense to me. And it was just let go on and on and on. And no no putting a stop to it. They just let Biden roll. I can't understand why he couldn't have been stopped a lot earlier. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby told CNN that North Korea's previous claim in September that they had no intention of selling ammunition to Russia was false adding that the U.S. will continue to monitor the situation. Our information indicates that the DPRK, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, is covertly supplying Russia's war in Ukraine with a significant number of artillery shells while ob obfuscating, ob obfuscating the real destination, I got to get a dictionary. Let me tell you people, I need a dictionary really bad. <laughs> of the armed shipments uh, by trying to make it appear as though they are being sent to countries in the Middle East or North Africa. Another fake out. <clears throat> Regardless of help from either Iran or North Korea, Kirby continued, they will not change the course of the war as long as the U.S. is committed to ensuring Ukraine is secure. American officials allege that the supply indicates that Russia is running out of weapons in a special military campaign. Michael Kaufman, a director of the Russia Studies Program at the Center of Naval Analyses, suggested that the Russian army has likely go through, gone through millions of shells at this point. Ammunition sent by the North Koreans may reportedly include rounds of small arms like machine guns and the AK-47s, according to Bruce Bennett of the RAD Cooperation. The International Institute of Strategic Studies reports that North Korea could have roughly 20,000 artillery pieces and multiple rocket launchers. It's not millions of artillery shells and rockets. That's more than the likely consumption. It could be millions of small arm, arms rounds, Bennett said. The exchange between the two countries could, man, mu, could mutually benefit the other. According to the outlet, North Korea's assistance to Russia could be seen as its way to establish a closer connection, which could be proven fruitful for the isolationist country when the Ukraine war comes to an end. To reciprocate the assistance, Russia could return the favor and resupply North Korea with ammunition or help with its widespread food shortages, which is affecting the communist regime more than other countries. Last year, the United Nations released a report that 42% of the country's population was undernourished.
All the little headlines here say, Trump says it's time to show McConnell the door. Uh, I don't know if I'll get much out of this or not, but I'll try it. On Tuesday night, former President Trump advocated for Florida Senator Rick Scott to succeed minority leader Mitch McConnell as Republican leader of the Senate. Scott is now serving his second term in the Senate. In an interview with Blaze TV, President Trump devoted most of his time to advocating the Florida Republican Senator Rick Scott and dumping on Mitch McConnell. Well, I really don't care for Mitch McConnell. He, he, he always has to be different. Can't never agree on nothing. Don't want to talk things out and come to a decent understanding. I really don't know. At the beginning of the... But he kept his uh, seat. <laughs> People voted him in. Oh, well. At the beginning of the year, McConnell voted his dissatisfaction with the quality of candidates running for the Republican Party in this election cycle. However, he did not name any candidates who Trump or any other candidate supported. Trump reportedly said, I think Rick is really terrific. He deserves a lot more credit than he gets. He is a bright guy who puts forth a lot of effort, and he was an excellent governor of Florida. McConnell was described as a strange guy by the 45th president, who expressed sorrow for having supported him in the past. Trump stated that he made a mistake when he endorsed him. He said that Kentucky likes him a lot. They don't have a high opinion of him, he needled. In addition, McConnell and Scott have been at war with one another over the past few months, primarily due to Scott's policy papers on his ideas for the direction the Republican Party should go in the future. You know, I think these people would be thankful that people want to help them out. You know, but not Mitch McConnell. No. When show host Glenn Beck asked whether he would endorse Rick Scott over Mitch McConnell, President Trump responded that he's not a fan of McConnell. He said he's a fan of Rick Scott. McConnell is not a favorite of Trump's. He said that there are other good candidates out there that would be extremely nice to consider. But because of his position, McConnell is able to raise money, and he donates that money to a significant number of senators. This is the source of the problem. Sugar coating, pat, pat him on the back. Yeah, yeah, lead him right into your little trap. My dog just jumped off the chair, if you heard that. <laughs> when asked about some of the candidates he supported, the former president lauded the Republican candidate for governor of Arizona, Carrie Lake, for her presence and demeanor on television. Trump remarked that she possessed a great sophistication, and he said she has an amazing presence on television, which is pretty important in the world. Well, I don't know. We got two years, I guess, to figure out if President Trump will make it or not. I'm reading other headlines, and Nancy Pelosi announces endorsement for Joe Biden. We'll get this one real quick here. This can't be too long. While there are still some outstanding races to be decided in the midterm election cycle, the big items have all been ironed out. With Democrats retaining control of the Senate and the Republicans retaking control of the House, that is leading many people in Washington to already focus on the next big election coming in two years, the presidential election 2024. On Sunday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, who will lose that title early next year to a Republican, said she believes that President Joe Biden should run for re-election. Leave it up to Pelosi. Biden hasn't made any official announcement on his intentions yet though he has whispered many times that he plans to run for re-election. In most years, it would be almost a sure thing 
that a sitting president would run for re-election after his first term. But Biden's age? He'll be 80 years old this weekend. His birthday is coming up. Hmm. And the fact that his administration has faced many criticisms have contributed to some people thinking he's better off stepping aside. I totally agree. I think probably 85% of us, 90% of us, are starting to really, <clears throat> like I've repeated several times in other videos, I'm scared to death of these next two years. That being said, Pelosi believes that Biden should run for re-election because he has accomplished so much and has a great record. Speaking on this week's program on ABC last weekend, Pelosi said, President Biden has been a great president for our country. Over 10 million jobs under his leadership. Working with the private sector, of course. He has just done so many things that are so great. He put money in people's pockets. Oh, really? Really? Vaccines in their arms. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Children back to school. People back to work. First starters creating 10 million jobs. He has made America independent by passing the CHIPS bill that says we're no longer reliant on those who would withhold products that enable us to manufacture in our country. She also made reference to the Inflation Reduction Act, a bill passed solely with the support of Democrats. The PAC Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure, Infrastructure Bill. Pelosi said that Biden did all of this with justice with equity, with inclusiveness, with diversity, taking us to a new place. He sure has. He has been a great president and he has great record to run on. <clears throat> Do you think maybe she might smoke some of that weed? That's just a thought, I'm sorry. Many people, especially on the conservative side of things, would tend to disagree vehemently with those remarks. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Vehemently. Vehemently with those remarks. That being said, some political pundits believe the outcomes of the midterm elections, which didn't result in the Republican red wave that may predict, many predicted, shows that Biden has a legitimate shot at being re-elected in 24. No words. No words. One day before the election, Douglas Brinkley, a presidential historian for Rice University, told the Washington Post, if Biden can hold on to a Democratic Senate, then he'll be in the catbird seat to run for re-election. Now, if it's a red wave and the Republicans win the Congress and the Senate, there's going to be a drum roll for Biden to not be the party's nominee. Well, Republicans kept the Congress, but they didn't keep the senator, however that goes. Biden has decided whether he'll run again in 2024. At least that's what he has said public publicly to this point. In the past, he told reporters that he would likely make a public announcement on his attention sometimes early in 2023. No words. No words. I'll be back.